The High School Sports Beat is brought to you by Alfred State College, where within six months of graduating, an astonishing 99% are working or furthering their studies. At Alfred State, they stress project-based learning, where students work on real-world problems and learn how to think, not what to think. Visit alfredstate.edu. Sports. It's who we are. It's what we do. It's how we roll. It's wins and losses, highs and lows, it's effort, respect, and dedication. The High School Sports Beat. Sports, it's who we are. Hello everybody and welcome to the High School Sports Beat brought to you by Alfred State College. I'm Dave Yates. We begin our look at Section 5 Sports this week with our opening story brought to you by Sticky Lips Barbecue and Juke Joint. Sticky Lips Barbecue Juke Joint, New York State's largest barbecue restaurant right here in Rochester. See our menu and live music calendar at stickylipsbbq.com. Sticky Lips BBQ, Jefferson Road in Henrietta. Bailey Teal of Penfield was heading into her senior season as a team leader of a Patriots squad with high aspirations. But on the way, she suffered a knee injury. She's back in the game now after months of rehab and even more patience. Here's Paul Gotham. It was a non-contact injury. While playing in an AAU tournament last May, Penfield's Bailey Teal looked to plant on her feet while driving to the basket. She suffered an ACL injury to her right knee. I was like, I was on a fast break and uh, there was a girl on my back and I did a jump stop to have her like go past me. And right when I went up and to jump, my right knee kind of collapsed in and I just fell and like heard like a snap. So originally when we were down in Virginia, all the trainers uh, there told me it was not my ACL. They thought it was my LCL, like a sprain. Mm -hmm. um, and then we went to the hospital in Virginia and they told us the same thing that it was in my ACL. And then when we came back here, um, I had an MRI, and then they told, it, told me I tore it. The original diagnosis called for a recovery that might have prevented the star from playing this season. I didn't think I was going to like make it back or be like strong enough to come back. On January 14th of this year, Teal returned to action. A couple of days after surgery, I think like three or four days after surgery. So it's probably been like eight and a half months to nine months. At this point in the recovery, the focus has shifted on improving her mobility and working on her endurance. The road back presented its obvious challenges. Maybe the first time I got to run, because yeah. my running was delayed, so probably like the first time I got on the treadmill was really exciting. Wow. And I got to start the running program. That was probably my favorite like memory because that's when I started like getting going. A Monroe County Division I co-player of the year a season ago, Teal scored 18 points a game and handed out five assists for the Patriots, which finished with 20 wins and two losses. Teal's early return didn't surprise Penfield coach Mark Vogt or teammate Nyara Simmons. You know, it depends. Some kids, it, it takes longer to come back. Um, I was hopeful she'd be back, you know, and we thought eight months would be that mid-January, but you just don't know how, how the body's gonna recover. She worked really hard and she did get back and really got back earlier than most people thought she was. So, you know, we're excited about that. I felt bad for her, but I knew she would work hard to come back. I knew it wasn't going to make her stop working any harder or anything like that. I knew she wouldn't get down about it, so I knew she'd come back. For Nyara Simmons, having her teammate back on the floor is an inspiration. Uh, I'm not surprised at all, not in the slightest, and it means a lot. It shows that she, she wanted to get back out here. She wanted to be a part of this team, and she, she really worked hard to get back out here. So, yeah. The motivation was obvious. First, there was the matter of her career point total. I mean, it motivated me a lot. Like, that's what I was, like, every time I got down in PT or at home, like, that's what I just kept reminding myself. I was like, I'm not leaving high school with 998 points and with a lot of unfinished business to take care of, so. And the chance to lead the Patriots, who fell in last year's Class AA final 58-54 to Bishop Kearney. 
You know, she's accomplished every everything a high school basketball player can, except for winning a sectional title. And I know that motivates her. And she did a really nice job during that first eight weeks of the season, you know, helping the younger kids get better and more comfortable. She sees the big picture. She, she knows this team has an opportunity. We got a lot of young players and she, she's really looked out for them as well as like Jess and I. The captains have done a sensational job really bringing the young kids to be ready to play. Uh, in the beginning of the season, I couldn't practice yet, but I was there um, do, working the clock with our managers um, on the sideline doing my PT, going in the weight room during practice. And then eventually, like a month later, I got to start getting into practice slowly, doing non-contact stuff for a little bit. And then a couple weeks later, I got to start um, small uh, contact. Are you surprised at all that she would work hard to get back here? <laughs> no, and I'm not surprised. At the end of the day, she loves basketball. So even if 50 people were like, maybe don't come back, you know, like get ready for college, you know, like some of the college guys do and they don't play the ball game. I don't think she's, it's in her DNA to do that. She just wants to play and she likes being with her teammates and her teammates like being with her. So yeah, I, I guess I knew she'd be back. Coming up next, Matt Trable joins us for the Duncan High School Notebook. We'll have that and more when the high school sports beat brought to you by Alfred J. College returns. When Girl Scout Ingenuity meets Dunkin' Coffee, you get a cup of can-do. Girl Scout cookie-inspired flavors are at Dunkin'. Try Thin Mints and Coconut Caramel today. And get a medium latte or cappuccino for $2 from 2 to 6 p.m. America runs on Dunkin'. And hello, everybody. Welcome back to the High School Sports Beat, brought to you by Alfred State College. I'm Dave Yates. It is time now for the High School Notebook, brought to you by Duncan. America runs on Duncan. And once again, we are joined this week by Matt Trable. Matt, always a pleasure to have you aboard. Thanks for having me on. Well, Matt, we're going to start talking North Star. Not the boys this year, but the girls. Yeah, lately when you hear North Star basketball, you think of that very successful boys team under J.J. Garwood, especially on the player side of things. You think about current D1 players, the Twins, Miles Brown, Michael Brown. But Roger Leo has a very good girls team right now for North Star Christian. They're one of the last two unbeatens in Section 5, 13-0 record to start the season. And a margin of victory average-wise, which is very impressive, was 23.5 points. And you look down this roster, and you see a lot of familiar names. It starts off with one of the captains in Michaela Brown. She's the younger sister of who I mentioned a second ago, those twins, Miles and Michael. And then up front you have Elena Garwood, who is a freshman starter on this team, and she is the daughter of the head coach for the boys team there in J.J. Garwood. Another really good story about this team is the starting center, Aliyah Penny. And the big thing about her is that she's a leading scorer on this team, despite last year she had to miss the entire season, unfortunately, due to injury. It's very poetic, I would say, that you have the last two unbeatens in Section 5 girls basketball being really right down the street from each other in Gates, in Gates, Chile, and North Star Christian. That's awesome. How about um, turning the boys now? Let's talk about uh, down in Livingston County and Kale Mom. Yeah, Kale Mom, you really have to give some love to them because... Even though they did not have for a few years a sectional title, until last year, they're kind of stringing together a couple of big years in a row here. So last year in the C3 final, they beat York. And they're currently in the C3 standings atop of those over that, by a couple of games, that familiar York team. And what's really the big clout in this team is that the three players that were atop their team last year are back this year. I mean, Vili Malasani, one of their backcourt studs, he is the leading program history scorer for them. You mix in a couple 6'3 guys up front. 6'3 sophomore Kyle Wade, only a sophomore, but he's in his second year in a row starting up front for them in 6'3 Joe Larson, a senior on the team, a guy kind of like Malasani that's been doing it for a little bit longer now. He can really bang on the blocks with anybody in Section 5 Class C just across all three, Class C1, Class C2, Class C3. A really good recent victory for them against the top two of the top team in Class B2. Avon in those standings. They were down double digits in the first half and they came back to win by 12. So it's very impressive what they're doing again. All right, really quick, let's talk a little bit about um, the Odyssey boys. Um, not a spectacular season maybe like they've had in the past or the past few years, but still one to watch. 
Yeah, I think fans should not get too caught up with that recent lopsided loss to Eastridge because the Lancers are an elite team in a higher classification. And even though they're the five seed right now in Class B1, I think they have a very good shot at repeating in Class B1, those Odyssey Leopards, because they might have lost a few starters from that title team, and that's their main point guard in Trayvon Harper, their main perimeter threat in DJ Billings, their main post player in Eric Williams. But what's more important than all that stuff is their top player overall from last year. Jaden Hartsfield is back this season in purple and white and his right hand man, another guard, 6'1", powerful kid, Preston Mathis. Everybody they're gonna be playing from here on out this season, that opposition is gonna have some mismatch problems with Mathis. All right, sounds great, man. Thanks very much. We're back with more of the High School Sports Beat brought to you by Alfred State College. We're after this. Well, coming up next, the Making the Grade nominee with Kyle O'Gara, and later, John Schwind holds his annual Challenger Miracle League Spring Training event. We'll have that great story when the High School Sports Beat, brought to you by Alfred State College, continues. Welcome back and thank you for watching the High School Sports Beat brought to you by Alfred State College. Hit the ground running at alfredstate.edu. I'm Kyle O'Gara. Making the grade this week is Greece Arcadia senior Jasmine Darling. Jasmine plays both varsity lacrosse and basketball for the Titans and has been on the basketball team for four years. Last season, Jasmine was a second team all-county pick and this season, Jasmine passed the 1,000 point scoring milestone. In the classroom, Jasmine has a 95% average. Off the court and out of class, Jasmine is a member of the Spino Literacy Program, where students volunteer their time to read to elementary school students. Playing two sports paid off for Jasmine, as she's being recruited for a basketball scholarship before choosing a lacrosse scholarship at Slippery Rock University. This week, Jasmine Darling is making the grade. If you have a student in mind for our Making the Grade segment, we want your nominations. Send them into mtg at rocksportsnow.com. And now here's Dave with the McArdle Section 5 Spotlight. Thanks, Kyle. Here are some of the athletes, teams, and coaches making news in this week's Section 5 Spotlight, brought to you by McArdle's in Fairport. Come home to McArdle's. Well, congrats to Spencerport's Silas Egenloff on his 100th career victory on the mat. Silas and the Rangers will represent Section 5 in the D1 State Dual Meet Championship. An update on Webster Thomas's Monique Hardy, the senior set a Section 5 indoor track record with a shot put of 43 feet 4 inches, and followed that with a season-high weight throw of 63 feet. And finally, Hilton 8th grader Matthew Carmestro bowled his first 300 game on January 23rd. The Cadets boys team is 10-1 on the year. Well, coming up next, a very special event at Salmon Creek with John Schwind. We'll have that story when the high school sports beat brought to you by Alfred State College continues. Hello once again everyone and thanks for joining us on the High School Sports Beat brought to you by Alfred State College. I'm Dave Yates. John Schwinn was drafted by the Pittsburgh Pirates in 2011, but he had to retire as a player due to injury. His career continued on the coaching side and for the fourth straight year, he hosted a spring training event for the Challenger Miracle League Baseball at Salmon Creek. Okay, while we get ready, we get everybody to our stations. Okay. So, first off, Okay, we gotta think, we gotta make sure we take Dave. Where is Dave? There Spring training for the Challenger Miracle League took place on Martin Luther King Day. The now annual event brings together athletes of all backgrounds for one day to enjoy the game of baseball. Founder and organizer John Schwinn has been the driving force behind the event. When you started this, did you envision this to, to be to get to this point? Uh, I probably not. Um, you know, it was more of I was home, and it was it was a passion of mine when I was in season. Um, you know, every town we're pretty much in has a Miracle League or a Challenger, mm. a Challenger League, and so I I kind of got. Um, to know the organization when I was on the road, really. And then I came home, and it, honestly, it started with a Google search. I just typed in Miracle League Rochester, 
and uh, Ron Camp's name came up in the field that they were building in Webster. And so uh, I reached out to Ron. I think I just sent him an email and said, hey, uh, this is something I'd be interested in doing. I really didn't have a facility or anything at the time. I was um, kind of just out on a whim. And, and so I asked him. And then uh, I, I was working here at Salmon Creek giving lessons. And so I brought it up to Dave. And actually, when I first started working here, Dave Schuth said, anytime you ever want to do anything uh, for charity or for community or service, just let me know. And I'm, I'm all in for it. So. I think it's organizational skills on Jonathan's part. The biggest piece of this puzzle is getting volunteers to help out. And once you get the volunteers, they want to come back because they realize how cool an event it is. And uh, like I said before, uh, you've, you've got players that are kind of expect it now. It's, it's just a highlight of their winter, I think. You know, they like to be busy just like my sure. kids did and just... Uh, opportunities for everybody. Oh, it's awesome to see guys like that taking their uh, their power from being uh, with the Pirates organization and stuff and being able to put it to use with uh, special needs kids who don't have the privileges that we had. I'm much more organized uh, the last <laughs> few years than I have been. The first the first year was definitely me kind of scrambling and so I, I did have my dad help me yesterday and um, Kevin Wheelahan helped me this morning. He couldn't be here. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of people, you know, the Pirates donate gifts. Uh, they've done that for every year, really. Um, Altoona Curve have donated gifts. Uh, the Indianapolis Indians sent some things this year. And I'm just really grateful that I'm able to uh, um, share at least some, some things that people might not be able to experience or get. Um, you know, there are book bags this year that I know are just going to be really special for them. So. The former Hilton Cadet star and MLB draft pick of the Pittsburgh Pirates has worked with Ron Camp to help promote the event. I'll tell you what, Jonathan came to me four years ago and had this idea, like do an indoor clinic for the kids. And it's just, I mean, they look forward to it. I mean, the smiles on these kids' faces are priceless. The volunteers get as much a bigger kick out of it. And uh, like I said, it, it's, it has grown uh and it's almost expected. The pressure's on Jonathan to keep this going now. I, I call him in uh, November, hey, what do you think? Uh, you know, you're done with baseball for a while. Are we ready to do this again at Salmon Creek? So it's, it's a great time, it's great. Hosted by Salmon Creek Country Club, the day includes instructional stations for the participants, as well as refreshments and gifts. The impact the event has on its participants. What's your favorite part of today? Sushi? Yeah, the food. The food? The food. Yeah? <laughs> so you're coming, you're here for the food? I go with them, but I'm mostly here for the food. You get your team team. Ah, uh, ah, uh, Paris. And you get your team team. You get okay. king. Yeah? What's your, uh, what, what, what's, uh, what's going to be your favorite part of today? Yeah? <laughs> nice. How cool of a guy is John Schwinn? The guy on the Spider-Man? Yes. He's awesome. He's awesome? He's awesome. <laughs> Why is he awesome? He's just awesome. He's, uh, he's a cool Spider-Man, sir. He's, uh, I met him last year. And, uh, he's pretty cool. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> nice shirt. <laughs> Go have fun. <laughs> I'm sure the organization piece kind of <laughs> overwhelms him a little bit too. I don't, I don't really ask him too much, but he tells me to come. I'm here. Can you run a station? Yeah. So I get, I get to take it in and uh, just see. I, I always say it's just pure joy. You, like you need something to brighten up your day. You come here, you see pure joy. There's no price tag on the joy the day brings. I've been doing this for 20 years, and I'll tell you what, it's, it's just heartwarming to see athletes whether they are special needs athletes or professionals or whatever, but these kids appreciate life more than we do. And it's just so great that they can have fun and nobody judges uh, whether they hit the ball five feet or 200 feet. It's just a good time for everybody. I, I just get a kick out of uh, like you, you go into like giving a handshake or a high five and they go for the hug every time <laughs> they want they want the hug and I think it's just I just think it's awesome it's cool uh, something that I'm gonna continue doing for as long as I absolutely can and um, it, you know it's a way for not only obviously it, it's a way to give back but it, it, this is really my responsibility in life it, it's to love other people right and so I'm I'm trying to do that and I'm trying to you know, demonstrate that to others that maybe won't, haven't come out to this or, or this is their first year coming out to this. So 
Um, hopefully it, it impacts them. I, I know as much as it impacts the participants and players, it impacts the volunteers just as much, if not more. Um, and, and really that's that's kind of the gist. We're all here together, there's no differences, um, and every day is able to love on each other a little bit, and um, you know we, we can go from there and hopefully build it in the future. Good job, man. From Salmon Creek Country Club, this is Paul Gotham with the High School Sports Beat, brought to you by Alfred State College. Go ahead, your turn. We'd like to thank our sponsors, especially Alfred State College, for making this sports be possible. We'd also like to thank the athletes, teams, and coaches in Section 5. And thanks to you for watching. We'll see you again next week.